Hello, Next.js.conf. This is what's next for NPM. I love this GIF and put it in front of all of my slide decks and tell a really long anecdote, which I'm going to skip because this is a lightning talk. I'm Miles. I'm product manager at GitHub, focused on NPM and end-to-end -end developer experiences. It's worth mentioning everything expressed in this talk or, you know, my own opinions. Um, some people in the audience might be thinking, what even is NPM? Uh, NPM is a critical part of the JavaScript community, one of the largest developer ecosystems in the world. NPM is the package manager for Node.js. NPM is a public collection of packages of open source code serving the JavaScript community. So it's not only the tool that you use for run NPM install, it's the registry that's serving all the modules that you're consuming. NPM Inc. was a company founded in 2014, which was acquired by GitHub in 2020. NPM currently supports millions of developers, over 1.3 million packages, with over 75 billion downloads a month. And we're really excited about the latest version of the CLI, NPM 7. Um, NPM 7 is shipping today with Node.js 15. So if you install Node.js 15, whether it's from a double-click installer or using your favorite version manager, it comes loaded with NPM 7. But if you want to try it out on any other version of Node, you can run npm install g npm at 7. And there's a lot of new features in NPM 7 that we're pretty excited about. The first one that people have been asking for quite a bit is workspaces. We also install peer dependencies by default. We have support for Yarn lock files. We support a new package lock format called package lock v2. And we also allow people to install from a GitHub PR, which is pretty cool. Now, workspaces is a feature that folks have asked for. Um, Yarn has popularized, but there's also tools like Lerna. Um, it turns out that most people are writing very modular code. You don't just have like one module that you're working on at a time. You might have five, six, 10, 100 modules that you're responsible for working on at the same time. And this is a problem that Workspaces is trying to make simpler. So on the screen here, you can see a package JSON and folder structure for a Workspace-based um, workflow. So you'll notice here that we have Workspaces. And if we ls that folder, you'll see we have module one, module two, um, are both root, uh, folders inside of, of this uh, root folder. And we have a package JSON, which is this package right here. And if we run npm install inside of this directory, it's going to get all the dependencies for module one and module two. It's going to put them into this node modules folder, but then it's going to make a symbolic link for module one and module two in that node modules folder. So if you try to import or require module one from module two, you won't get the version on the registry, you'll get the workspace from your workspaces folder. Now, this is just the beginning of features that we're gonna do for workspaces, but it's a really, really powerful concept. And in my personal opinion, at least, um, a little bit easier to use than NPM link, which is how I've been doing this kind of stuff in the past. Now, peer dependencies, this is a pretty big change. They're now installed by default, which can be a breaking change because we are going to error on a peer dependency mismatch. But we only do that for top-level dependencies, not for transitive dependencies. So that means that if you have two dependencies that you install and those two dependencies both declare a peer dependency and there's a mismatch, we're actually going to throw an error now and not finish installing. But if that happens, don't worry. You can use dash dash force and it will still it will run through the whole install process and it will pick one of, <laughs> one of them um, to run with. Now, if you have issues with force, you can also use dash dash legacy peer depths to use our old peer dependency algorithm from NPM 6. Um, and you can also set legacy peer depths uh, as an environment variable um, by exporting NPM underscore legacy underscore peer underscore depths equals true. Um, this pattern is actually really cool because you can use this to, to set any of uh, our flags at an environment variable level. It can also be set in your NPM RC. Um, if you're feeling a little dangerous, you can try strict peer depths, which goes in the other direction, which actually will error uh, for transitive dependencies. So that's something that we don't do by default right now. So if you have two dependencies and those dependencies dependencies have mismatching peer depths, we're gonna just kind of try to do the right thing under the hood. Um, but in the future, we may also, you know, call it in a bad install if there are any peer depth mismatches. Um, we're, but we're not making that decision lightly. We're working with the community right now. We're getting feedback on what works and what doesn't work, but we wanna make this feature available for folks if they wanna try it out. I mentioned installing from a GitHub PR, which is pretty cool. This is what it would look like, npm install, user, project, um, pound, and then pull slash pull request number. 
Uh, it's a similar to how you can install branches, um, but now that you can install pull requests, it makes it a thousand times easier to try something out when someone's opened a pull request against your module. Um, there are some breaking changes though. Um, as we mentioned, peer dependencies being installed by default uh, may break some workflows, but as I also mentioned, there's a backdoor there with dash dash force and dash dash legacy peer depths. Um, NPM now uses package exports, which is a new feature from Node that allows you to define the public interface of your module. What this means is if you were deeply reaching into the NPM tree before and grabbing random files, well, it's not gonna work anymore, sorry. Um, but we've done a lot of refactoring. We've broken out uh, NPM into a lot of other modules. So it's possible that um, whether it's Arborist or Kakash or one of our other internal dependencies, we may have a public interface for you to use now. And that, that will be much better supported over time. Um, we've completely rewritten NPX uh, using the NPM exec command under the hood. Um, there's also a new prompt. So when you run NPX, if you try to NPX a module that doesn't exist on your system yet, you'll actually be asked to confirm that you indeed want to run it. Um, this is important from a security perspective because, you know, there's off by one errors, there's all sorts of weird ways that people could be running things on your machine, you just don't want them to. This is just a little bit of extra safety that we've built in. Uh, NPM LS, LS now only outputs the top level depth, so there's a flag that you can pack to get the full tree. Um, as well, the output of NPM Fund and NPM Audit have both also changed. So if you were writing any tools that relied on the output of those, uh, it may break with NPM 7. But what's next, which is you know, what I thought, I think everyone's excited about. Um, well, we're gonna be working on improving docs, tests, and stability, making sure that when you open bugs, we're closing them, that NPM 7 will be, it isn't yet, we just released it, but it will be LTS uh, quality um, in the near future. Um, we're also gonna improve performance. We're, we're gonna be setting up benchmarks for NPM. We already have some of the basic work done there already, but we're gonna be comparing NPM 7, not just NPM 6, but also to Yarn, uh, PNPM, um, and the various package managers in the ecosystem to make sure that speed is something that we're being competitive on. We're gonna to continue to innovate with workspaces. Um, we already have an open RFC on our NPM slash RFCs repo um, that will allow us to um, expand the feature set a bit. And we're excited to hear from teams who use workspaces to find out you know, what, what do you need uh, to improve your developer workflow. We're also working on another thing called package overrides which is pretty cool, which will let you override the version that's installed throughout your whole tree. So let's say you're a TypeScript user or a React user and you wanna like replace all the uh, versions of a React in the whole tree, um, package overrides will allow you to do that. The other thing that's coming up next and it's something I'm really excited about is what you ask us to do. And I wanna to present to you the NPM public roadmap and feedback process. So this here <laughs> is developer tools, um, but it's also the NPM public roadmap. This is a new repo that is going to be released in my future, which will be your past by the time you see this video, um, but it will still be pretty fresh. Um, but this repo has in it a full roadmap for NPM, including the CLI, um, the registry, the website, as well as documentation. Um, you can see here, what the roadmap looks like, which is a GitHub project board. You'll see all the issues that we're tracking for work. You can see that we just closed this one to ship the NPM 7 in, in Node.js 15. So I'll move it down here and you can see the other stuff that we have lined up to work on this quarter. Um, but you can also see that's pretty cool is future work. So this is stuff that we haven't yet prioritized that we're exploring. Um, one of the things that we released, for example, last quarter was CI friendly automation tokens. And we got feedback that people wanted it for per package scope. So we have an item on the roadmap uh, to track that. And you may be asking yourself, how do I give that kind of feedback? And that would be on our other new repo, the NPM feedback repo. And the NPM um, feedback discussions repo is a place where you can come and bring us feedback, um, make suggestions on changes that we can make or make requests about all of our products, whether it's the CLI, the registry, the website, or potentially how all three of them work together. Right here, you can see what the feedback system looks like. It's using GitHub Discussions, which is a newer product from GitHub. And you can see some of the discussions that have already started taking place. In fact, this one in particular, I wanted to show, which is pretty cool, is a request to make the repo for a package more prominent. And um, you know, someone came in, they made the request. I made a small mock-up saying, hey, is this kind of what you have in mind? And they came back and said, yeah, this is exactly what I had in mind. And so we went ahead and we opened a roadmap issue 
which you can see here, to track exploring doing that work. And when we've decided exactly how it's going to work, we'll change this um, from exploring and we'll put it into the quarter that we plan to get this work done. So I want to just thank you all for tuning in and, and listening to this talk. I'm really excited about what's next for NPM because it's something that we're going to all build together. Uh, I'm going to be in the Discord if you have any questions, so feel free to just ping me or I'm at Miles Borns on Twitter um, and GitHub. Um, not SoundCloud, though. You'll have to ask for that one. Okay, well, thank you. Have a great day.